Hey, it's James Folter here, CEO and one of the co-founders of Vixen Labs, the conversational AI agency. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to put AI at the center of your strategy, particularly your digital strategy, with some help from the folks from Succession. So this is Succession Does AI First Digital Strategy. We know right now that there's so much changing in the world of digital, whether it's new channels that are emerging, others that are dying off, and also so many more choices in terms of the tools that we use and the approach that we take. It can feel pretty daunting, but I wanna simplify this. It's not gonna be, here's the top five tools for you to use to do better prompt engineering, or here's the three AI things that you need to know about, but some very simple choices that hopefully can help you actionably get started putting AI first in your digital strategy. The first thing is to establish some ground rules. The first rule of digital strategy is that all channels, they have their own lifespan. We've seen in recent weeks that things can change really quickly, sometimes entirely determined by just one individual at the helm of a company. Whether it's new social media channels launching, whether it's the platforms that we're used to running the tools and technology on being owned and changed, or whether it's just simply that things move on and we need to adopt new technology into the culture. AI is going to be much of a similar beast. What we've seen since the explosion of conversational AI in particular in the form of ChatGPT and many of the other generative tools emerging is that it's created a lot more choices for practitioners in large organizations and small in terms of what they're gonna do with their marketing strategy. How do you choose the right platform to be on? How do you make sure it's gonna be the one that's gonna stand up to some of the ethical and legal concerns presented by the new legislation that's coming out? And even what capabilities does it have and how can I start using it? All of this stuff has been made much more complicated since AI became a more forefront technology for Mark. And of course, it's not just the big foundational technologies like ChatGPT or the large language models from the likes of Meta and Amazon, which we'll come on to. But there are so many new tools that are coming out on top of these existing models that make life really complicated. But realistically, when it comes down to putting AI at the center of your digital strategy, I think one of the most fundamental things we have to do is determine which horse are we going to back. And really, that means talking about the big companies in this space. The reality is, is that you probably are already being driven into this choice by a lot of existing technology that's already in your organization. The first thing you need to be doing is auditing what tech you already have inside your organization. This is something that we work with brands and businesses on all the time, helping them understand what's not just technically feasible, but what's desirable and ultimately what's viable inside their organization. When you've got this much tech already inside a business, particularly if you're a large established marketing team, you probably don't always have complete control over these choices. But then it gives you the option to be informed by the tech choices that have already been made. If you've got a particularly risk averse organization that really wants to make sure that they're compliant with as much of the global AI law that's coming out, you might need to make some decisions around that as well. All of these different factors come in. And when we do an AI audit with clients, this is some of the stuff that we dig into as we get to talking with other parts of the organization outside of just core marketing. But it goes beyond just backing the right horse. All of these models are going to require you to bring a bunch of stuff to the table yourself. This is the BYO part of the AI strategy. You're going to have to bring a bunch of your own stuff to the table, regardless of what model or platform provider you choose. First up is your data establish where your data, how it can be accessed, and whether or not it's going to be usable in a large language model application or AI strategy. Not all data is necessarily going to be accessible, particularly if it contains PII, personally identifiable information. And if you have to comply with things like GDPR or other laws regarding, for example, the protection of children like COPPA in the US, then you're going to have to make some very specific choices about what data you can bring into your organization and your AI strategy. The second is content. If you're going to start using generative tools or large language models to produce content, you may have certain restrictions around what type of content you want to produce with these tools, and also may want to pay more attention and scrutiny to how those models are producing that content in the first place. We can feed these large language models with large corpuses of data within our organization to help train, tune, and optimize it. If you want to dig into that more, look at my video for the five steps of how to bring AI into your large organization, which I'll link below. The next step is what other tools and technologies are you going to be plugging into these AI systems, regardless of which one you've chosen. APIs are going to be really important here. You might be trying to hook into some automation software that you already have running in your business. Maybe you're trying to connect up with a CRM system like HubSpot, or maybe you're using some kind of sales management tool like Salesforce. All of these are going to have APIs that you may want to bring into your large language model applications 
and make your AI systems much smarter sitting at the center of your organization. But of course, it's not just putting things in, but it's also stripping things out. This is where personas and restrictions come in. What persona do you want your brand to inhabit when it talks to your customers using AI? Do you want it to use slang or different types of grammar? How is it gonna work across different languages? These are all the types of questions that we work on when we build custom brand personas for AI applications with our customers. And finally, the restrictions. You don't want a custom language model to just be able to answer any particular question. It's all very well at being able to help answer questions about your product or customer services, but you don't want it answering how to bake a cake or what the football scores are gonna be this weekend. So our content restrictions also have to come into play here. If you want help setting up these content restrictions, it's something that we work on as part of this discovery AI auditing process. When we think about AI, it's no longer a tool or a channel that we bolt on like we have done in previous years with other types of technology. AI has to sit at the center of our organization and the center of our digital strategy. So maybe you're thinking about deploying a chatbot to the web or to a mobile app. Maybe you want to start a voice experience that can run on Amazon Echo Alexa devices. Or maybe you're scaling up your social messaging and you want to be able to plug into Meta and those types of platforms. The AI is the center of this. It's the brain, it's the engine that keeps things running. So there's a different set of questions we have to ask and answer when we think about what AI choices we're going to make. It's not just about what goes in the center, but the channels that it's going to talk to. And we want to make sure that we set up our models and establish our applications in a way that they can cater for all of these places for the long term. The question of using AI right now is an ethical one as much as it's also a business challenge. And I hate to say it, but as a marketer, the ethics are also your job. Thinking about how you're going to train models, thinking about the data that you're going to capture, how are you going to restrict privacy and ensure that it's not being biased in the way in which the outcomes are being produced? These are all questions we need to wrestle with. Putting in place a great ethical framework is a core part of a good AI marketing strategy, and it should begin before you start deploying anything to any channel. If you want more thoughts on this or how to engage with it, we really recommend at Vixen Labs the Trustmark Initiative from the Open Voice Network. It's a seven-step process that helps you establish and benchmark the ethical choices you're making in the use of voice and conversational technology. And I'd highly recommend checking out more information at the URL on screen now. So if you've stuck with me and come this far, then you're probably thinking about what do I go and do next? And there's a few things to think about and a few things to do if you want to start putting AI at the center of your digital strategy. This is executive level business. Who is the right partner that we should be choosing? Which of the horses that I mentioned before are you going to back? Think about your channel choices. Where are you going to deploy it? How are you going to start that process? And where is it going to end up? And thinking most crucially about what the use cases are and what are the ethical questions that are raised by those use cases. Then you've got to get going and do something. So what are you going to do? You need to audit the options that are in front of you. If you haven't yet started doing an AI audit for your business, then that's something at Vixen we'd be really happy to help you do. It takes in all of the different questions about what's technically viable, what's feasible, and mostly what's desirable for a customer when it comes to using AI as part of your marketing stack, whether that's helping sell, serve, or provide savings to the business. You want to create an air gap for innovation. It's often not wise to put these AI tools immediately into our business as usual processes. We advocate creating an innovation air gapped environment, a sandbox if you like, somewhere to play these tools out and use these use cases in testable environments with limited audiences before scaling them up to the masses. If you wanna build an LLM sandbox, let me know and we can get our team to help you set that up. And finally, the last thing to say is you have to accept the debt. What does it mean to accept the debt? All of these tools and technologies are new and emerging, and you're not gonna make all of the right choices the first time out. Therefore, there's gonna be some technical debt and some organizational debt that gets built up over time, and that's your job to accept it. There's nothing that any of us can do to stop that happening. When you get started, learn to accept the debt and accept that this is executive level business. This isn't something that comes lightly. But if you take on these choices and think carefully about this, you can put first in your digital strategy and set yourself up for success. After all, that's what we're all after, right? If you want some more thoughts about how to get started with an AI audit or setting up an LLM innovation sandbox, then drop a comment below or send us a DM. You can also find out more information about all of this type of process at the website down below, vixenlabs.co. Till next time, I'll see you soon.